Hey there, aficionados. Uh, Kevin here from NOAA, Northern Ontario Aquarium Hobby. Uh, today I decided to take a bit of a break from the Foundations and Aquascaping series and uh, start off a new one that's going to run sort of concurrently uh, with the other. Uh, it's uh, We're going to do elements of design, sort of giving you some of the basic ideas uh, necessary to uh, understand how to do layout. Now, of course, um, rules are all obviously meant to be broken, but if you start off by understanding these rules, then you'll know how to break them properly. And this just going to give you an idea of how to use uh, uh, balance and uh, um, starting off with the rule of thirds uh, in your aquarium hobby. So uh, you're probably not going to see too much of me because I'm going to zoom in on uh, just this uh, spare tank I had sitting around that I've got set up here that uh, I'm going to use to sort of block out and uh, sort of give you an idea on how to make use of that when considering your hardscape. Okay, so as I said, we've got this spare tank set up here that uh, I haven't really done anything with. Uh, just for the sake of demonstration, uh, we've got this uh, beautiful uh, old white towel substrate that I'm going to be using today. Uh, now, I did actually bank this up, uh, uh, force a habit, but also it'll help uh, understand the concept. Uh, so again, when you're designing your escape, you are going to be wanting to bank your substrate up uh, from the front uh, to the back. Uh, one, this allows for any stem plants that you're going to be planting in the back to have uh, a good deep root system. As well, it creates uh, sort of a, uh, an effect of depth that will allow you to uh, sort of view everything on a little bit more of a dynamic angle uh, so that your your uh, uh, carpeting plants or your or low-growing uh, uh, foreground plants are visible and you're not uh, really sort of just sitting everything on a flat surface so it just really helps give that illusion of depth as well as a bit uh, better of a presentation line now the rule of thirds is is quite simple um, it involves literally looking at the uh, linear space that you have uh, mostly considering in uh, right now for a two-dimensional view um, our eyes are trained to like symmetry but also to like balance now uh, a lot of times those two terms are confused but uh, balance and symmetry can be uh, um, quite different things when you're considering uh, it in a design capacity now visually I'm going to take uh, my ruler here and I'm just sort of gonna eyeball where uh, thirds appear to be and just sort of give us a uh, uh, a quick line of reference uh, to use. So this looks like to be approximately a third. And I'd say this might look to be approximately a third. I'm looking at it from a weird angle, so uh, basically that uh, sort of weighs out. And those of you who are going, oh my god, what's he doing riding on his tank? Dry erase markers, man, they are a designer's friend when it comes to working uh, with fish tanks. Now, I don't know if the, this black here is actually showing up quite as well as I was hoping, uh, but I think, you can, uh, I think you can kind of see it there. So, as you can see, I've broken up the tank roughly into, into the concept of thirds. Now, if we were to take a piece and set it smack dab in the middle, my substrate isn't holding quite as well. You know, it's really just sort of plunked there. And we can see that putting a piece right smack dab in the middle, it, it's, it doesn't really create any sort of sense of action or of uh, motion or drama. Um, but, however, if we take the piece and move it right into our third line, you know, suddenly it, it, it creates a sense of motion by leaving some negative space here, some empty room, and drawing our attention to there. It gives a sense that there is uh, uh, an area, you know, that this rock is inhabiting. Whereas when it's in the center, it really just feels clump. You know, it's just sitting there. Likewise, I mean, moving it over here, again, it, uh, it, it creates that sense of area, that sense of flow, allowing our, our eyes to um, want to feel to, to, to seek out this negative space and to fill it out. And that's really, really important when it comes to uh, setting up the visual 
aspects of your tank because you want the eye to be continually moving around and, and, and finding interesting things to look at. And by creating a negative space, which this is a, a case of balance, it's an off balance, but it is still balanced because now we have something of substance against something of no substance in this case, and that creates a balance for the eye. Now, if we were to take something of roughly like size, And put it uh, again over in in the uh, the other third. Then you'll see again that even symmetry uh, creates a boring picture. You know, uh, again, it, it 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 doesn't give any place for your eye to specifically move. We don't want the eye to rest in design. We want the eye to move. Now, likewise, if we were to take a piece that was smaller than that other and place it in the thirds. Again, suddenly it creates a, a feeling of motion because there is this imbalance here. Uh, so it, again, it's allowing the eye to move from the original point of interest and focal point and search to find another one. And so your eye does get drawn to this. This smaller stone, as I mentioned earlier, <laughs> just with my fists, uh, uh, gives more weight to the larger stone and the larger stone uh, tends to overpower this, but in a very pleasing way, because again, it's creating uh, a place for your eye to flow to. Now, again, if we decided that we wanted to keep our, our, our main stone within that third and still allow uh, that sense of balance, uh, we can move this now over, say, to the center. Again, it's still allowing that negative space to create that flow. And again, there is an interplay between these, between these two rocks. Now, again, I'm just sort of plunking it down in what is the most convenient way for the sake of this demonstration. But uh, even in this case, you can see that uh, they're both giving different weight to each other, but it's allowing the eye to move. And it draws it away from this center in the back because your focal point comes here and then your eye moves to the next point of interest. Now this is um, sort of a, a, a mock Iwagumi setup, but that's really the essential uh, philosophy behind the Iwagumi is having your primary stone move into your secondary stone, which is complementary to the first, and then your uh, tertiary stone which will be a complement to the secondary. Now, uh, I'm gonna do a whole setup uh, discussion on Iwagumi uh, in a future video, but at least this gives you sort of a basic idea of the concept. It's, it's just trying to find ways for the stones to, to complement each other and to appreciate each other. Uh, now, if we started again to move back into something uh, of equal size and, and we put it right side by side. Again, it, it seems to take that focus away because we've got two items of same visual strength and same visual height side by side, uh, perhaps a little bit more uh, understandable if shown like this. Uh, again, it's less attractive to the eye because even though there is this negative space here, these two points of equal strength uh, uh, are they're capturing the eye and they're not really allowing for that much motion to come around. If I pull my hand away, you can see, I mean, you still do appreciate some of this negative space here, but not as much now in this case, accidentally, uh, this small peak here does help set off that balance a little bit uh, and, and draw the eye. But uh, if I was to move it uh, a little bit more uh, likewise, if it's if it's going to stay up for me, which it probably won't right now. But so if I was to move it a little bit more this way um, and pull pull it aside again, because we're on the same plane, we've got the same sort of uh, uh, strength between the two stones and it's less interesting for the eye. So now that we have uh, maybe a basic understanding of how the separation of thirds uh, allows those focal points to create a sense of tension between something of substance and the negative space. Uh, the next thing to consider is then breaking up the, uh, the visual plane 
uh, horizontally rather than just vertically. All right, so these are a little bit crooked, a little bit uh, uh, off the thirds mark. Uh, so I was attempting to draw it from uh, a different angle. But anyways, it, it'll continue to at least uh, satisfy our point. Uh, so interestingly enough, even though my measurement is a little bit off because I, I didn't do it, uh, just when I had set up that substrate, uh, my, my towel substrate before, you can see that uh, when I banked it, I banked it to just about the third line in the back. Now that was just again just force of habit. So as you uh, practice these, uh, again maybe by actually laying out your grids and, and getting an understanding of this, your eye will begin to be trained and you'll start to, you'll sort of start to see these things. You don't necessarily have to do it, but if you stick with the practicing with the grids when you're working on your layouts, eventually your eye will become trained. So again, if we take our our main stone here, as, as I was saying before, and put it uh, put it back in there if it'll stand up for us. So again, we're sitting at the third, and uh, interestingly, again, if you if you take a look, uh, it it happens that the that the conjunction point of your horizontal and your vertical thirds hits right again into that uh, center piece. Um, now, if we want to move it off a little bit to the side, you don't have to be right on that right on that point, but if, if we were using these guidelines as a way to, as a way to uh, um, set up our stones, then these points, these uh, uh, inter interstices, I'm sorry, interstices, the intersecting points, is uh, where you're going to have the areas of your most strength. Now just again as an example, I'll roughly try and stack up. Uh, a few stones here to give myself a, a little bit of height. Uh, again, the uh, the towel isn't holding on quite as well. Now this is an ugly, uh, a bit of an ugly looking setup here. If I can actually even arrange any sort of balance. You know, this, uh, this space back here definitely uh, uh, needs to be filled in because it's creating, but again, by bringing uh, our hardscape uh, up again to that point of interest up there, that allows us to create a certain balance. Now, if we take, again, our smaller piece that's meeting the lower inter interstices, again, it's creating that nice visual flow to move from one horizontal third down to the next, from one vertical third over to the next. Now, as you can see already, just in working with this design, uh, we, in this case, uh, it's allowing for the creation of that path, path to go right down the center. Now, those paths, again, um, even though our eye wants to follow it and everything like that, that's even though it's almost dead center, that's not uh, a focal point because it's still a negative space. It's a place for the eye to follow down the rock and travel back into our, um, uh, our setup into our hardscape. Now, uh, this sort of setup by having, you know, the, the two, uh, the two banked mountains, the, uh, the sort of uh, mountain path is a very popular, uh, sort of setup with people. Now, I mean, if I, uh, take my, uh, take my piece again, you know, and if we do one of those sort of, we've got our hardscape set up coming down on the one side and we've got our, our hardscape again uh, coming down uh, along the other side here to, to, to sort of create that mountainscape. You know, if I pull those out, you might be able to see a little bit better. Again, we've allowed ourselves to create uh, a, a sense of balance and a sense of unity, a place that we can, uh, that our eye can follow that path. But again, notice just, <laughs> just by force of, uh, uh, of habit, you know, just the rough lines that I did end up following down through those lines. It's just something that your eye begins to, to be trained in. And then in a case like this, when you, uh, when you start uh, entering in your, your plants uh, bases instead, uh, because it doesn't have to just be hardscape that you're working with. If these were uh, not hardscape, if you were working on, say, uh, some sort of a, a jungle tank or um, you know a nature aquarium if these were if these were our setup of plants instead where we've trimmed them out 
again by placing them in spots where they meet those thirds uh, intersections intersees you know then it's going to create again that nice balance and again balance doesn't necessarily have to be symmetry it just has to be something that allows a focal point for your eye to allow it to move freely back and forth between a point of uh, lesser stature to a point of larger stature and so again that's a fairly popular uh, setup that people will will have with where you know you're working with your your two sides you'll see Amano has done this uh, uh, quite uh, often in some of his nature aquarium setups uh, it's called the uh, the concave setup you know where you've got your you've got your plant mass and you've got your your driftwood and you can see I'm just randomly sketching them in here for the moment but again just random not even paying attention to what's going on here my eye naturally wanted to follow some of these some of these interstices you know and I'm looking and I was when I was drawing that I was looking at the back screen and ignoring this front grid altogether but you can see again how those highlight points start following both those horizontal and uh, sorry about those horizontal and vertical uh, thirds and again by having these being points of interest having each of these interstices being places to draw the eye and using those sort of as a bit of a rule of thumb you're able to create uh, those imperfectly balanced uh, scapes and keep those those points of interest because again you, the eye naturally wants to follow and flow and have place to move about you don't want to design where the eye is moving away and moving out it's always trying to draw back in to allow the eye to swim around and keeping these main third focal points allows it to keep that sense of imperfect balance and asymmetry to it that just seems dramatic and just seems to have a bit of a better flow to it now another fairly popular type of uh, just random setup not really using much of a hardscape aside from uh, say driftwood uh, again is uh, typically what people end up calling the the island setup and again with the island setup we've usually got our uh, bunches of driftwood sitting in the middle you know and people sort of pile them up uh, in, in in such a way and then plant their their booths or you know uh, uh, anubius or or uh, along rhizome plants uh, and, and mosses uh, along the lines of this with maybe some stems in the back creating that little bit of a of a halo effect on this now again if this is set up correctly even though you're setting it up right in the center of the tank the top of that island is best if it falls within that area of that third range of that uh, third range uh, likewise the the outer portions you know now of course because this is wild things are going to to move across it but again right right along here is where you're going to want to have visual points of interest so use your splashes of color your splashes of interesting plants because if if you've got something like this that is and you have not any balanced uh, focal points for your eyes to really latch onto the eye is going to want to continue to fall out here because this sort of negative space you know almost seems dead i've never been much of a fan of that island style because it it promotes too much movement of the eye outwards uh, and not quite enough inwards because once it reaches inward if we set up our focal point too much in the center then it ends up looking sort of clunked so the ones that are done really really well you'll notice still within those re th those uh, interstices points of the thirds uh, end up having nice nice focal points for the eye to catch on and so it keeps you swimming around in this area instead of just focusing boom right on the center or drifting your eye to the outside now there's a few more uh, points that are I'm going to make in the next video 
uh, that uh, talks about then how, starting to use the uh, triangle design style, but how using these uh, third grids allow you to create those those triangle designs that are are uh, very appealing as well. Now, it may seem like we're using different angles as we go along uh, in that, but you'll see once I actually get into the working of it, how much it uses. Um, uh, these these intercees of thirds to help create your proper angles and everything along the way. Now I'm I'm just uh, filling around here while while I talk to you just to create uh, uh, something for you to look at aside from my again beautiful uh, uh, hand modeling. But again, as as you notice, if we start if we start working quite easily in this case using that that point of thirds uh, as a reference point. You know, that was just super fast. And you can see that that by using the, these, these points of highlight uh, uh, really briefly, it allows motion for the eyes to follow. It allows places for the eyes to settle and want to walk around here. And it's, it's, it, it leaves negative space. It leaves some negative space here for the eye to wander as well. Now, in cases like this, if you're not doing any of a gumi where you're doing a carpet, uh, you may want to put... Um, some sort of stem plant in this area that can again help draw the eye into this section. This is why uh, uh, Amano used a lot of, of the taller hair grasses that could be affected by the flow to, to allow the eye to continue to flow back into uh, those sort of setups. So again, just really quickly to recap, uh, the thirds allow points of interest for your eye to settle on. It allows you to find uh, an asymmetrical balance that keeps your eye moving from point of interest to point of interest and allowing it rest spots in negative space, although the negative space itself can be a point of interest because it creates really interesting silhouettes. And so there you go, aficionados. Uh, thanks for watching. Uh, again, I know this wasn't uh, perhaps the most optimal setup, but maybe for the next time I'll uh, come up with something that uh, perhaps catches the eye a little bit more to uh, make the point a bit clearer. But at least this gives you a sense of how to start looking and how to consider the, uh, the basic elements of design is using that rule of thirds. Um, as uh, we progress with this, as I said, uh, there's a few more advanced techniques uh, in terms of the golden ratio and uh, uh, triangle and uh, the diagonal uh, uh, vertices that uh, allow us to make use of this rule of thirds in a little bit more of an advanced way. And like I said, rules are meant to be broken, but you can only break a rule once you know how to follow it. So if you're just starting out in and you want to get a little bit more out of your design, you know, like I said, I'm just using on the front side of the tank, uh, I mean, I did it inside, but please never use this marker actually inside uh, uh, your tank that you're going to be active unless you're going to clean it really well. But using the outside of the tank with a dry erase marker is a great way for you to be able to sort of just rough out a quick grid so you have uh, an understanding of, yeah, maybe placing here. And it can really help you start to work on those spots. And once you've trained your eye, if it hasn't already been trained to it, but once you've trained your eye to use those intercees and to use that rule of thirds, uh, eventually it'll just become second nature to you. Uh, so I, I, I hope that you do uh, uh, like this uh, new series of videos. I'm gonna be back with some more foundations of aquascaping as well, uh, but I'm gonna continue on with this elements of design. So please do, as always, hit subscribe down there. Uh, questions, comments, uh, let me know uh, if you have anything that you'd like to see me talk about. Again, great stuff coming up uh, this year. So again, stay tuned, dive right in. Thank you.